Welcome to Law You Should Know. The law affects every aspect of our lives, our home, our jobs, and our recreational activities. Now you can learn about the law and how to protect yourself against the loss of your liberty or property. Learn how to stand up for your rights and seek compensation when you have been wronged. Your host for Law You Should Know is attorney Kenneth J. Landau with the Mineola Law Firm of Shane Doxtanisi and Corker. He's a member of the Committee on Professional Ethics of the Bar Association of Nassau County and counsel to the Nassau Academy of Law. And now, here is your host for Law You Should Know, attorney Kenneth J. Landau. Hi, this is Ken Landau and welcome to Law You Should Know. Today we'll be talking about avoiding problems with the elder care and, and helping them to avoid problems concerning any, anyone elderly who's related to you or who you're concerned about. And my guest is Dave Nassany, and he's not a lawyer, but he has been involved with this issue for many years. And he'll give us tip, some tips and information that can be useful to everyone. Dave, welcome to Law You Should Know. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. And tell us how you got involved with this issue. Well, I was just a normal Joe, just like anybody else. I was born in Brooklyn. My family decided to move to California for the weather, and I found a beautiful woman to marry. I married her 22 years later. We were getting ready to enter into the emptiness phase of life. We had raised three daughters, got them all married, got them out of the house, even had a couple of grandkids to boot. And then she complains about a headache she had for like three days, the headache of her life. Well, we didn't think much about it at first. I mean, it was only a headache. But then on the fourth day, that headache ceased to be only a headache. By the time the ambulance arrived, it was too late. The woman I loved had suffered a massive stroke, left her severely speech impaired, paralyzed on the right side. And immediately our world turned upside down. Nothing would ever be the same. And she and I went through what is called the grief process, two years of hell, where we almost split up because she was just mean. And I was the person who was loving her the most. So, you know, you, you always hurt the ones you love, the ones you shouldn't hurt at all. But fortunately, after a couple of years, she got through the grief and came to that acceptance uh, stage. And our love was rekindled. She became her old self again. And I discovered that uh, I didn't even know what a caregiver was when it was. And I started going to a support group. And, and I realized that there are so many other caregivers out there that are feeling lost and alone and going through pain and suffering. I didn't want them to give up like I almost gave up. I didn't want them to suffer because I made all the mistakes. And so as a caregiver, I became Dave the Caregiver's Caregiver. I host a radio show just like you, and I uh, wrote a best-selling book. I've been on 24 morning shows all across the country, spoke at Harvard, spoke at NASDAQ. And so this is what I do now. And when I, when I met you in New York, uh, I said, wow, there are a lot of legal uh, pitfalls that caregivers can fall into. And a lot of them, you know, I have personal experience with. And also they can do things to make caregiving a better experience and protect themselves as well as the caregiver. Yes. Yes, absolutely. You know, uh, first of all, let's talk about the legal definition of a caregiver. You know, there's two types of legal definitions, and I'm not a lawyer, like I said. So if you hear me say anything that, that sounds funny, uh, I'm, I'm all ears. <laughs> uh, the first one is what's called an informal caregiver. It's a family member or a natural person who aids and supervises the daily care of a di disabled person. Second one is called a designated caregiver. That, that's someone who's 18 years of age or older. So the other ones could be children or teenagers. And so this person has significant responsibility for managing the well-being of a person who is disabled in some way. And those are the people who can usually get in trouble, you know. So uh, some typical questions. How do I know if my elder parent needs my help? Because let's face it, you know, we've got the millennials out there, and their parents are the baby boomers. They're getting older. They're getting sicker. And uh, this is about the time where, you know, they're... They're in danger of falling. If they fall, they might break their hip. They might get Alzheimer's or dementia or COPD or, or all sorts of things, Parkinson's. And so there's, there's about 10 uh, red flags. Let's go through them real quickly. Number one, sudden lapse in housekeeping. So you go over the house and the place is a mess. I mean, you know, there's, there's clothes everywhere. It looks like it hasn't been dusted or vacuumed in, in ages. That's a red flag. Second one is the mail is piling up and bills are not getting paid. You know, if it's on the kitchen table, 
You know, it's like a mountain of bills, and that means the mortgage isn't getting paid. They're going to turn the lights off. you got those pink envelopes that say, you know, danger, Will Robinson. You know, we're going to turn your lights off. Uh, if it's a, a mailbox or something, well, it's so stuffed that the, that the post office stopped delivering the mail, put a little yellow notice in there that says, empty your box, and we're keeping it at the post office. So that's a red flag. Weight loss. You notice your, your father's looking like he's anorexic. You know, maybe uh, elders typically forget to eat. You know, maybe the, the hunger urge doesn't come anymore, and so that's a red flag. Dirty clothes, poor hygiene. Uh, you know, the, there's an odor coming from the house. Uh, inappropriate clothing, like he's out there watering the lawn in, um, in thongs or pajamas or something like that, um, or sleeping in uh, his three-piece suit. Uh, another one is signs of confusion in the kitchen. That's where, you know, maybe the milk is in the oven and uh, the uh, the dirty dishes are in the refrigerator. Uh, weird stuff like that. And then number seven is losing track of meds. Now, that's a big one because my mother-in-law did that and it... It, it made her go to the hospital because she was severely dehydrated and had some interactions. Number eight is safe driving is an issue. I mean, you know, should this person be driving anymore? Uh, do they uh, have trouble finding their way home again? Do they confuse the brake with the uh, gas pedal like my mother did and she got into an accident? That's when we took her keys away. Uh, not a pleasant uh, conversation to have. Mom, Dad, I don't think you should be driving anymore. <laughs> Number 10, not making sound decisions. You know, they're talking to uh, anybody who calls the phone, giving them their social security numbers, scam artists, etc. So that's a lot of stuff to, uh, I'd say if you have one or two of those, <laughs> you're in trouble. And I just want to mention, it, could, it may not be a parent, it could be an an aunt or, or, or an Absolutely. uncle or a neighbor or someone you're concerned about could be a husband, wife, a significant other, a brother, sister, a child, you know, uh, there's dementia and Alzheimer's. It doesn't just happen to elderly people. I've, I've heard of some young people getting it. You know, sometimes it's induced by an accident or, or medication or something like that or alcoholism. Or the certain forms of dementia that occur earlier, unfortunately. Yeah. And, and also what you mentioned about uh, not taking care of things, uh, people, you might find people are taking too much or neglecting to take medication. Right, right. And uh, with, so one or more of their senses could deteriorate, so their vision and goes or is going, or uh, they're not going for checkups, or, the, you know, their the hearing is deteriorating. Yeah, and memory is a big one, too. You know, there are so many different parts of the memory, like my mother-in-law, you know, she can remember things that happened uh, that I have long forgot, but she can't remember what I told her 30 seconds ago. It's like I never said it, you know, or I showed her something or I gave her something. And it's like that, that movie, you know, first, uh, 51st Kisses or whatever it's called, uh, you know, 10 Second I think it's 51st Dates. 51st Dates, thank you. <laughs> 10 Second Tom, remember him? Now, let's, let's talk to uh, some of the other issues that you are, you know, you have advice on. Uh, tell us about the CARE Act and, and how it can help caregivers. All right. Well, there's good news on the horizon. Uh, a new law is likely to come to every state across the nation. Now, during a hospital stay, caregivers have discovered that they have often been, quote, unquote, thrown under the bus <laughs> when it comes to their status during a hospital visit. Can you imagine? Current hospital policies limit hospital visits and other communications to family members only, you know, leaving the caregiver out of the equation altogether. And that's probably the one person who should be included. So this CARE Act, it's an acronym, uh, Caregiver Advise Record Enable. And uh, I really can't make uh, any sense of why they call it that, but that's what it's called. Uh, it's a new state law that AARP is urging all state lawmakers to pass. And basically, it helps family caregivers as their loved ones go into the hospital and as they transition home. So the CARE Act requires hospital, hospitals to, number one, record the name of the family caregiver on the medical record of your loved one. Number two, inform the family caregivers when their loved one is to be discharged, so you're in the loop. And number three, provide the family caregiver with education and instructions of the medical tasks that he or she will have to perform, you know, for the patient at home. 
currently it's the family member who has to communicate all this information to the caregiver. And, you know, they don't always get the information right. It's like that game where one whispers is this one, and the other one whispers is that one. By the time it gets to the end of the line, it doesn't even resemble what first was said. So that's a, that's a good law for those people who are constantly in and out of the hospital. And it's also, I mean, I mean maybe you're going to cover it a little later, but in New York we have things like a health care proxy and power of attorney and a HIPAA authorization. So you want to make sure that you are authorized to ask about and that medical appropriate medical records can be shared with you. Right. Yeah, we'll get into that. So now caregivers can be subject to certain laws that they didn't even know existed. You know, and uh, there should be a lot of caregivers in your audience because uh, actually 30% of the population, uh, that's about 65.7 million of unpaid Americans are caregivers. And so uh, about 30% of them actually die before their loved ones do. And we'll get into that later. But basically, if you're a caregiver, you got to watch what you do. Because caregivers are governed by federal and state laws, which vary from state to state. Various laws regulate eligibility and standards of conduct, such as abuse or neglect or misappropriation of clients' property. (laughs) That means you're stealing their stuff. So many laws have been passed to protect seniors from unscrupulous adult children, which I might add is the minority, you know. Laws have been passed to protect, but it, it's really a minority. Not all children, very few, are the ones who you hear about in the news who are, uh, you know, like the Menendez brothers who actually murdered their parents or others who are just trying to, you know, rip them off. Most adult children love their parents and want to take care of them. And it's important to have the discussion with them before something happens where they no longer have the ability to uh, explain their thoughts or sign the appropriate paperwork. Absolutely. Um, You know, that conversation is is very necessary because the law says, you know, if they uh, suspect that somehow, you know, you're putting assets into your name, uh, regardless of the reason, you know, it raises little red flags because these same laws are also making uh, uh, seniors a danger to themselves because they pass these laws to protect seniors from their children. But uh, such a small minority of that happens that when uh, the children are just trying to protect the, uh, the seniors from themselves, it looks like they're doing unscrupulous things. Like my mother-in-law, for example. We had a tricker into going into a 72-hour evaluation in the hospital, escorted by the police. We told her uh, that they wanted to search the house for intruders while she was gone, just to make sure that it was safe, because she thinks that her house is getting broken into several times a day. You know, she's paranoid. She has dementia. She's been not diagnosed yet, because it's hard to get a doctor to do it. So after four days, they stabilized her. You know, she was dehydrated. And our plan was to put her in a facility right after that because we didn't want her to come back home because she shouldn't be alone. She keeps uh, firing the caregivers that we send there, and because and she calls the police on them. So nobody wants to work for her. So they told us that I'm sorry, we got to send her back home. Well, we said, What do you mean? Why? She obviously uh, is not in her sound mind. They says, Well, it's not our job. Laws have been passed that we are uh, only to look at her physical health, not her mental health. And I'm thinking to myself, oh, my gosh, you know. So she came back home, and she's still living there, and she's still a danger to herself. I put cameras all over the place just to, you know, make sure. But she almost burned the house down one day. She had the stove on, and somebody knocked on the door, and she's just having a conversation. The guy starts seeing smoke coming out of the kitchen. She goes, are you cooking something? She goes, oh, no. I mean, so this is what we're dealing with. Right. Uh, Unfortunately, seniors have rights. (laughs) Um, Dave, we're going to we're going to come back to that topic. We have to okay. take a, a, a short break now, but when we return, we'll continue our discussion of caregivers and uh, the law and issues that relatives can take to prevent or deal with problems. You're listening to Law You Should Know here on 90.3 WHPC, the voice of Nassau Community College and also over the internet at nccradio.org. We'll be back in a moment.
This portion of programming on WHPC is brought to you on behalf of the Nassau County Bar Association, helping both the public and lawyers since 1899. They are the largest suburban bar association in the country. The Nassau County Bar Association offers clinics where you can meet privately with an attorney to prevent or solve legal problems involving Hurricane Sandy, foreclosure, wills, or elder law. Speakers on almost any legal topic are also available to schools or community groups. They can also help lawyers advance their legal career.